What drives me isn't to be number one in the world. It's to be the best gymnast I can be. Anything to do with gymnastics, you know, form and function, they play hand in hand. Well, the future for form and function is that they may no longer have to be separate entities. That really they can be done to the point where you blur them and the form and the function are, are one cohesive statement. You know, I never ever lose sight of why I do gym, why I start a gym and what I want to achieve. Since a young age, I used to train five, six days a week. It used to take me, you know, all the way up until eight o'clock at night. I used to get back from training and I used to get to school the next morning. You know, I've got Olympic Games coming up. You know, nothing on this earth is going to distract me from that. I basically live at the gym. It's intense, but you know, all my friends, all my family know that's what I do. They know that in order for me to reach the top, it's going to require a huge amount of dedication and sacrifice. In order to achieve our goal to develop the most progressive sports car ever built, we had to develop it from scratch. It was work, 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 and I didn't go to the park or the beach for inspiration. I went to my desk and I sketched, I sketched like crazy. And that's how a lot of the best stuff comes out in the end. Everything to do with the pommel horse, like each part of the body has to work in harmony. You know, it's a single motion, and everything kind of consists of doing the same thing. And the best way to learn that action and that technique is just to do thousands and thousands and thousands, literally thousands of circles. We developed a completely new tire with a completely new rubber and uh, with a completely new form, which is one element helping us to reduce resistances and therefore consumption. This little boy Owen came up to me and he looked a bit I was like, you're right, Owen. And he's like, Lewis, I'm sorry. I was like, what are you sorry for, Owen? And he was like, ah, oh, I beat your record on the pommel horse. And I said, Owen, don't be so silly. You need to try and be better than me. Don't try and be as good as me. BMWi was truly special for me. I thought that after about seven years that I've been here that I knew how to design a decent car. In this particular case, we hit the reset button and we started from fresh. engineer came to me and he said, look what I did. I woke up at two in the morning and I have this great idea. And I thought it was just designers that did that, but the whole team was like that, very passionate. There's six different disciplines and for some you need static strength and some you need explosive strength. You know, and we train with plyometrics and being able to be responsive. It's all about finding the balance because you have things like the floor and vault, which needs to be powerful and short and explosive. And then you have things like the pommel horse. Pommel horse is a strange beast, you know. It comprises all of the aspects of gymnastics, balance, aesthetics, lines, core stability, power, speed, and a great degree of grace as well. You know, this combination of being efficient and dynamic at the same time is only possible thanks to carbon fiber reinforced plastic. Carbon fiber gives us a lot of room to play. Carbon fiber gives us a lot of ability to design the lines that are important, design the lines that are dynamic. I think the biomechanics of pommel horse is quite interesting. The basic principle is that to be in balance, a gymnast has to maintain their centre of mass above or below their point of support. And for Lewis, he has to keep his mass centre above a very small support point. The smallest degree of error will mean that he's off. The 50-50 weight balance was one of the key targets when we started designing the infrastructure of this car. We were able to locate the pretty heavy battery pack in the center. It's pretty low, so therefore you have a beautiful low gravity point, which you need to provide, especially in a sports car. If I find myself in a stressful situation, like at the World Championships when I'm warming up backstage, I'll listen to some reggae music. Because it just chills you out. Reg that's what reggae music does, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's what I love about it. Girl, you need to know I can be a prince charming Be holding you tightly when you wake up in the morning when they started putting the final model together, the interior designer and myself, we would just sit there in a chair like we were watching a movie, just loving it. And then we'd go away and then about 30 minutes later, it's like, okay, let's go back. Maybe they put on another panel. Everybody is 100% passionate about what he or she is doing because we need to deliver. So the pressure is extremely high and we need to remain focused. When I'm in competition, I kind of have a little ritual that I go through. What I do is I trick myself. You know, I sit down and when the second person in front of me is competing, I put a t-shirt over my head and I literally go through the motion from when I'm sat on that chair in my head. I walk up, I get onto the podium, I chalk up, I do the handles. Um, I'm standing, I wait for the clock to say my name, it says go. And it's kind of like a second warm-up for me. 
you know, by the time I finished, um, the person in front of me is just about to start competing and that gives me about six or seven minutes before I'm about to compete. And that six or seven minutes is just enough time for me to stay in that zone, get the job done, and then whew, let everything rush back in. It's such a nice contrast to be able to work in a gym for so many weeks and months at a time for this one big opportunity and you go there and you do it and you get a medal. You know, they, they play so nicely off each other. The competition process is fierce. The designers, they all want to win. They all want to have fun, but at the same time, they want to make sure their design is truly the best. Tokyo, not um, like long being back, and yeah, went for the hard routine. I do two sheer handstands. I go up to handstand, I come down, and then I go up to handstand again. And also, I've got a move on the one handle. I spin round, and I used to do it just once, and some people just do a three-quarter turn. But with my new routine, I do three spins on one handle which is just unheard of, I mean, no one does that, you know, the risk is massive. I had my doubts, I thought maybe we had a choice of playing a little bit safer and going for perhaps a bronze medal. And I just thought, look, I've got two world medals before, I've got an Olympic bronze. If I'm going to push for an Olympic gold, which everyone I think wants to see me try and get, um, you know, I'm going to need to try and do this routine. So he performed his most difficult routine, 7.1. I had a slight slip on the dismount, but, you know, walking away with a bronze medal, I, I can't complain. To achieve the next level, you have to come up with something new, which is pretty challenging and risk-taking. And each little element makes the whole thing something unique. London 2012, I can't explain the magnitude of what it means, especially to an athlete. I mean, Beijing was just unbelievable. The concept of having trained so many years for that one point, uh, it's a scary, daunting task. You know, winning bronze uh, was just unbelievable. I can't even understand what it'd be like to win a gold medal. We have to be very obsessed about weight because every gram counts. We look at every single bolt, every single screw, every single detail in order to minimize weight. My own feeling about obsession is that it's the most necessary component in making results. Uh, I myself have that genetic defect called obsession <laughs> and I think most of the people that I've worked with that have got to any sort of high level have always been very obsessive, very tenacious characters and if anybody sets anything that's difficult for them they have to see it through and it might take weeks, months, years and they're never happy, never happy with the result. They always need to improve and look for the next challenge. Passion, being obsessed, being excited is key. Every night I'd wake up and just sketch something, make a little doodle. I, I just couldn't stop thinking about it. I couldn't turn off the switch. This is a one in a lifetime project. This is what drives us. This makes this project so unique because we are inventing the next level of technology. I've been working for my dream 18, 19 years. It's a short dream. You know, I've only got a year and a half left. The great thing about all of the BMW i stuff is that it's, it's all about dynamics and pleasure and joy, something that BMW always has stood for. When we look into the future, it is clear to us that sustainability is not only a trend, it's a very important value. We all know what we are aiming for and we built the car which has never been built. Just because the car is friendly to the environment doesn't mean that it shouldn't be absolutely beautiful, absolutely emotional and absolutely dynamic. If, if I was to win a gold medal, it'd be unbelievable. <laughs>